any of the decisions this uh, commission makes, you have the opportunity to appeal it to the council. If you want to speak on any of the uh, items on the agenda, please fill out a speaker card. They too are over on the end of the uh, uh, railing there to my right. Each side will have 10 minutes uh, for a uh, proposal or a comment, and then you'll have five minute rebuttal. And after the, your case has been heard, please exit the building. Don't go out in the lobby and, and uh, discuss all the uh, things that you'd like to have seen or, or whatever. Uh, it just causes too much disturbance in here. <coughs> Martha, where's Martha? There she is. Well, you, uh, uh, I'm going to follow the agenda on this one. Uh, will you uh, lead us in prayer? Yes, I will. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight to handle our parish business. Lead and guide us in all our decisions. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. That will you lead some pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, please call the roll. Dave Doherty. Here. Martha Casabon. Here. Pug Lauren. Here. Marcus Hines. Todd Richard. Here. Bernie Willie. Here. Bill Matthews. Here. Jimmy Davis. Here. Dave Manella. Here. Dale Mackey. Here. Ron Randolph. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, we need to open the agenda. Uh, it did, I'd ask that... Uh, uh, an item get put on uh, at the beginning of the agenda and did not get on there it's for the uh, nomination and election of officers for uh, calendar year 2013 and I need a motion uh, to open the agenda. Mr. Chairman, so moved. I move that we open the agenda to allow the nomination of our chairman and uh, vice chairman. Thank you. Do I have a second? second. We have a, a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, the floor is open for nomination for chairman. I'd like to nominate Dave Darty as our chairman, please. Okay. And I'll second we, that. We have a second. Okay. Second. Do you want to do the chairman and vice chairman together? Or no, I think we need them to do it separately. Okay. All right. Uh, any other nominations? Move that we close nominations. Thank you. Is that second? Second. Please uh, need to vote on that. Motion carries. I need to vote on the, the actual motion. Right. Please vote on the actual motion. Lawrence is not working. You broke it, huh? Yep. It's coming up on no. It's coming up no. <laughs> I know. He's hitting yes. I'm watching him. He's hitting yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bug, you, you voted yes? I voted yes. Okay. Thank you. I know. He's banging over. <laughs> we knew it. Your right. wires are crossed. Right. <laughs> motion carries. <laughs> All right. We have uh, need the motion or nomination for vice chairman. I'd like to nominate Dave Mandela. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other nominations? For vice chairman. Do I hear a motion to close nominations? So moved. Moved and seconded to close nominations. Please vote on closing the nominations. It's working now. Motion carries. Please vote on the uh, please vote on the original motion. Computer's running slow tonight. <coughs> Motion carries on that. Congratulations, Mr. Manila. And uh, along with you being uh, vice chairman, I'd like to also appoint you as uh, uh, 
Power, no, not power of attorney. <laughs> Solomon, Solomon, Solomon Terry. 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 <laughs> there you go. <laughs> power of attorney. If you will accept that, sir. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, next item on the agenda. Minutes. Huh? Minutes. That's where I was going. <laughs> next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the December 4th meeting. Those were in your packet. I hope you've had an opportunity to review them. Are there any corrections that need to be made? Uh, Martha? No. I'll make a motion to approve. A motion to approve by Martha. Second. Second. By Dale. Please vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Staff, we have any? Uh, we have one withdrawal. I see it. Any other? Okay. All right. On uh, the agenda, we have uh, item three, which is zoning case 13-01-001. Uh, has been uh, requested withdrawn by the petitioner. Uh, the existing zoning was A4A. Proposed was uh, uh, A4A is single family residential. AT1 is animal training and housing district. It was three acres. It came to us from parish council motion on 12-6. Partial located on the southeast corner of Harrison Avenue and 6th Street, being square 60, Tammany Hill subdivision, Ward 3, District 2. That's been withdrawn. All right. First item on our agenda is... Uh, <coughs> Zoning case 12-12-118, uh, uh, existing zonings A1, proposed zonings AT1, again, suburban district and animal training facility, animal training slant housing district. It's six acres, the petitioner is Carol, Caroline Landry, the owner is Caroline Landry, partial located at the southeast corner of Albert Thompson Road and Louisiana Highway 40, Ward 2, District 3, staff. The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed with residential and agricultural uses. The property is surrounded by single family residences, agricultural uses, and undeveloped land. Staff sees no compelling reason to recommend approval considering that the site is also zoned rural overlay, which allows for the same uses listed under AT1. The requested rezoning to AT1 could also potentially allow for an increase in the density in the area. Note the applicant is seeking for the zoning change of AT1 to erect a cell tower on the site. Um, and I'd like to add that staff sees a possible solution of perhaps rezoning one acre to AT1 and the remaining five acres to A1 so that it doesn't increase the density and they could possibly st still do the cell tower. Okay, so they, they can't do the uh, uh, cell tower then under uh, the regular A1? Correct. Okay. Um, so staff recommends the request for rezoning all six acres be denied. Okay. Uh, thank you. Is Caroline Landry in the audience? I have a feeling they didn't know about, you know, the, the, the night or whatever. Um, but I don't think even that I asked and the petitioner or even the cell people were here last time. Is anyone here for this? Um, Since no one's here, I would suggest that this be postponed. Well, that's what I was say, the table, because now that they've given us a possible solution, but my question to the cell tower people is an acre, if an acre would not be enough, the size, then we would probably end up denying it. But I would like to know more information. We, so Usually, you know, the tower, if it falls, it has to fall on land. Right. So the, the, the maximum height, I think, is 250 yeah. feet. So, I mean, an acre, you know, regardless of the, if they put it in the center. They're usually collapsible, too. Right. Yeah, they're they usually yeah. collapsible. Yeah. Um, yes, if you don't mind, I would like to table this and um, again. <laughs> Motion by Ms. Castlebon to postpone until the February meeting. Do we hear a second? Second. Motion and a second to postpone until the February meeting. Please vote. I have something to say. Uh, Jimmy, I got a question for, for Helen. But didn't you clearly s just say that under uh, A1 with the rural overlay, they could have this? No, could not. Okay, so the, the, the information in the actual staff comments is incorrect. They can have agricultural uses, but they can't have a cell tower. 
Yeah, the oh. same uses that are permitted okay. under AT are permitted under rule. Okay. Except for that, for that cell okay. tower, and that's Thank the you. main reason why they requested it. Okay. Please, please vote. And I'd like more information because we are getting calls that it's really needed in that area. Yes, absolutely. Because it's draw. I mean, but we got to figure out a way to. Mm -hmm. um, there's no service. Okay. In that area. All right. So. Staff, are you, do y'all notify the petitioner? And yeah, we'll contact the petitioner and see how we can clarify the situation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Item 2, zoning case 12-12-123. The existing zoning is HC3 Highway Commercial District. Proposed zoning uh, is I2. Uh, it's, uh, is that, did that say the same? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Right. It's 19.748 uh, acres. Uh, petitioner is Brian Rotolo. The owner is Whitney Bank slash Stephen P. Duffy. Uh, location, it's a uh, parcel located on the north side of Browns Village Road, west of U.S. Highway 11, Ward 9, District 14. Staff? The 2025 plan designates the site to be developed with commercial uses. The site is currently undeveloped and surrounded on the north and west sides by J.F. Smith Industrial Park and on the east sides by commercial shopping center and on the south side by single family residences. Staff feels that I-2 industrial zoning may be too intense considering the presence of single family residences on the south side of Browns Village Road. However, considering the intensity of the permitted uses listed under HC3 zoning district, staff would not object to rezoning the property to I-1 industrial. Staff recommends the request for I-2 designation be denied. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Rotello? I think you were going to talk to staff about uh, going from an I-2 to an I-1? Yes. Okay, is that what your wishes are? Yes. Okay. So what do we need to do just to accept his verbal commitment? Yes, as I spoke, um, I spoke to Mr. Rotolo on the phone, and you just had to verbally uh, request to amend his, his, uh, his original request okay. to I-1. So we would be voting on HC3 to I-1 then, Correct. right? Correct, yes. Okay. All right, any other comments? Anyone no. in the audience in opposition to this? I'll close the floor to the public and uh, turn it over to the commission. Anybody want to speak? I'll, I'll go ahead motion. and take a motion to approve. It's you know, way off of <coughs> I-11, uh, I and it's appropriate. Okay. We have a motion to approve HC3 to I-1. Second. Second by uh, Mr. Manella. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Rotella. Thank you. Uh, item three has been withdrawn. Item four, <coughs> zoning case 13-01-002, uh, an ordinance to amend the St. Tammany Parish UDC to amend various sections relative to agriculture use as administrative permits in A1 through A8 residential districts to require a rural overlay below the urban growth boundary. Staff? Here, I invite you to look at the attachment that you, that we, you have here with um, the text change, which would here what we suggest is that all agricultural uses would be um, permitted as an administrative permit as long as they are located under a rural overlay or located on the north side of the urban growth boundary. And basically, as you know, to um, avoid having larger structure into maybe neighborhood area or areas that are, you know, zone maybe A4 or that are not necessarily where agricultural uses are not or agricultural buildings are not necessarily appropriate for, for you know, in particular areas that are more dense. And um, this is what we're recommending approval for this text change. Okay, thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? Okay, I'll close the floor to the public. Uh, Mike, or, and did, are you kind of up to speed on this as to where it's coming from and any other comments that need to be made? 
I don't think any other comments are necessary, Mr. Uh, Doherty. Uh, however, I can offer that um, some council members that represent areas um, in the urban to suburban uh, southern half of the parish um, have expressed some concern when um, a property owner who may have some acreage, perhaps, um, and the ability to um, institute an agricultural use on the property, like Ms. Lambert said, uh, that activity, while it sounds innocuous, may not, quote unquote, fit within the um, overall residential feel uh, of the neighborhood in which the property is located. And so uh, those council members thought that an additional step or an additional consideration in those instances, that being the rural overlay in addition to the underlying zoning, would be an appropriate fix for specific consideration of that particular location as an agricultural use given the surrounding area. And just to belabor a little bit, as you know, zoning is a land use issue, whether in a particular use is appropriate for that particular location. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Davis. Yes, uh, on this matter, does that also include, like if somebody wants to have a tree farm or something like that, is that included in agricultural uses? Where if he wants to uh, run and operate a tree farm, he'd have to come out and get a rural overlay first and then come get this permit? Is that part or is that, are we just talking about crops and things like that? Ellen? It's any farming. All they would do with this overlay, if I'm not, if it gives us a like a chance to look at that particular area and what's surrounding it before, and then we would we would be um, we would be looking at putting a rule overlay. Is that correct? From this, it's just yeah, another if, step. If if there's a piece of property that is on A1, and it is not located, it you know it is located within the urban growth boundary, so south of the urban growth boundary, and it doesn't have a rural overlay then the, the owner of the property would have to request a rezoning to the rural overlay to, you know, to allow for a, an agricultural building or you know, to have a farm or crops to be allowed on the property. And then it would give the possibility to the neighbors to come and voice their opinion to see, well, why, you know, why are you requesting a rural overlay? Well, this is what I'm planning on doing. Exactly. That's um, what I'm saying. It's like a, it's a step that we would be able to review before it's actually it brings resolved. brings it to a public Just, hearing. That's correct. Exactly. And I, I think this, this is a good step, and um, it makes a lot of sense um, because there are some agriculture, um, there are some still large acreage that they could, be quite uh, annoying to there, there's some areas too that may be zoned a3 where somebody's trying to put an mm -hmm. agriculture use in too and right uh, it, it does cause a problem Jim, Jimmy, so you really have I have yeah I have well, I have another question for Helen on, on the same okay. subject so I understand about that and having the two-step process what I, I'm a, a, a little bit confused on is is this administrative permit does that mean regardless administratively it could be set this way Right now, it, it is. No. They can come in and get an administrative permit. Is that correct? Well, they're still going to be able to get an administrative permit if they have a rural overlay and if they're located north of their urban growth boundary. Right. So it's a three-step process. Is that correct? If the, if they're outside of this boundary, they'll have to have a rural overlay. South, south of the boundary. South of the boundary, they'll have to have a rural overlay. They'll right. And an administrative. And an administration administrative permit. Correct. Yes, and if you're north of the if you're north of the the urban growth boundaries, and, or if or if you have a rural overlay, then you're just going to get an administrative permit. Okay. How about um, like say state and A1 through A8, even lots that small could get a rural overlay and be able to do agricultural uses even on those small lots. Well, if someone wants to apply for for a permit, it wants to rezone, but you know to have an agricultural building, you need to have an acre of land. 
uh, maybe not building, but maybe a use like growing animals or crops or. Yeah, but they would have to come forward you know, and apply lots, for rezoning. Small lots, we're talking about less than acre lots here. So. But they might have two or three lots there or something mm -hmm. together. So. And maybe that, a bunch of neighbors also. <laughs> yeah. I know you close the floor to the public, but I but having been involved in the, the discussion, may I have a? Sure. <clears throat> Rick Wilkie and I was involved and and actually read all the the zoning the new zoning regs as they were being developed uh, and made comments on a lot of them. What's happened is this: you have we've gone through and done a comprehensive rezoning. You may have a tract that's 50 acres that has nothing on it, and it zoned A4. Now the owner of that property may very well want to do agricultural use today. The reason agricultural use is a permitted use in A4 or A7, uh, whatever, is because of the fact that it's not been subdivided that way. So <clears throat> that's what they're doing now is saying, okay, well, wait a second. Let's, let's at least get this extra step because I, I, I questioned that when it was going on. Is why agricultural in a A7? Well, because it could be 50 acres right. zoned A7, okay? All right. Thank you, Rick. All right, any other questions, Ms. Casbon? I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Matthews. Please vote. <coughs> Dave Manella. All right, motion carries. Thank you. Item 5, zoning case 13-01-003, existing zoning is A4A, single family residential. Proposed zoning is PBC1 Plan Business Center of 15.25 acres and A7 Multifamily Residential District, 3.95 acres. Total acres is 19.2. Petitioner is Wayne Burris, the owner is Allstate Financial Company. Uh, parcel located on the east side of Oshner Boulevard Extension, west of Normandy Oak Subdivision, uh, being lots 5A1, 5A2, 5A3, 5A5, uh, Ward 1, District 1. Staff? Petitioner is requesting to rezone the property, um, as you previously stated, to PBC1 and A7 multifamily. It meets the comprehensive um, plan of the plan district and a uh, portion of single family residential conservation. <clears throat> Staff has no objection to the request and would like to recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Mr. Marone. Thank you, Mr. Daugherty. Members of the commission, Paul Marone on behalf of Allstate Financial Company. Uh, the request before you is really um, two requests in one. One is for the PBC1 zoning and one is for another parcel uh, for the A7 zoning. And, and I'll deal with those separately because they, uh, while they're under the same case, they, they, they really are separate components to the, to the project. Um, the first is the, um, is the PBC1 zoning and the, the parcels uh, intended for this track uh, is about 18 acres. It's currently zoned A4A. Uh, and it was part of the villages of Normandy Oaks, the extension of the existing Normandy Oaks development. Um, there is a parcel between this parcel, the parcel subject to the rezoning request, and the existing Normandy Oaks, and, and that is about a 600-foot uh, gap that, uh, that consists of the villages of Normandy Oaks. You may re recall that we came to you about a year or two ago and rezoned that to A4A. So there is a, uh, an A4A component between the parcel being requested for the planned business campus and the existing Normandy Oaks site. Uh, we're proposing a health and wellness campus, which is a new concept to the area, and there are, there, there are none of these type developments located uh, on the North Shore and really in, in southeast Louisiana that we're aware of. Um, the PBC-1, as you know, is intended to provide Class A office space in a campus setting. Uh, as Sidney Fontenot told us when we met with him with the concept and tried to determine what the appropriate zoning was, he emphatically told us that PBC-1 is not a strip mall zone. So if our intent was to come in and put strip malls along this property, that this was not what we wanted. Uh, but what we do want is Class A office space um, 
within a campus setting. So this is clearly the zone, this was the zone that he suggested that we go to, and we believe the, the zone is appropriate. Um, what is a, uh, a health and wellness campus? And um, even before the changes with our health care laws happened this year, there has been a pretty significant move in the health care industry where the payers, primarily the insurance companies, uh, and the providers, primarily the hospitals and doctors, physicians, and so forth, uh, are taking a more active role in our health care. It is not just when we're sick, we go to the doctor. Uh, what we are seeing is those payers and those providers are getting involved in the day-to-day -day activities of our lives in an effort to make us more healthy. So when you go to these type of facilities, it is not a bunch of sick people. In fact, the majority of them will be people that are well, that are hoping not to get sick, and there are services there uh, that can help with that endeavor. Um, to add a little more detail to it, what you would see in a health and wellness campus uh, would be uh, doctor's offices, physicians, um, be it uh, child care, be it orthopedic, all types of health care uses. But there would also be uh, insurance companies, financial companies, perhaps banks. There would be other associated uses, uh, child care, um, other type providers that would, uh, that would feed off of and complement these uses. Um, you may have um, lodging in the area. You may have a, uh, an educational component, perhaps a nursing school or something along those, those lines. All of these are allowed under the PBC-1, and all of those fit into the type of campus setting that we're talking about. The campus itself, again, it is not going to be stripped out. Uh, we're talking about lawns. We're talking about pedestrian friendly. We're talking about taking this approximately 18 acres uh, and creating an atmosphere uh, where uh, you, can, you can come in, you can park, you can visit all of these uses that you would need uh, without getting back in your vehicle and driving anywhere. There are lakes on this property. Those lakes would be incorporated into uh, the site plan. And all of this you would have an opportunity to review at the planning stage, but it, uh, it, is to provide, it is an effort to provide these services and these uses in a pleasant uh, and approachable atmosphere. Uh, you might ask the question, well, why, uh, why this particular property, why this area? And I would submit to you that Western St. Tammany uh, is already a health care dominated area. In fact, it's one of the largest um, business engines that we have on this side of the parish. And if you look at the Highway 21 in particular, I think you'll see that there's already a, a large conglomeration of health care services. We have Oshner, uh, the Oshner facility not far from us. Just to the north, we have St. Tammany Parish Hospital and all of its wonderful facilities there. You have the outpatient pavilion on Highway 1085. You have doctor's offices along Oshner. You have doctor's offices along Highway 21. Uh, we're located north of I-12, which gives uh, certain benefits and so forth. So this is an area that we believe uh, is already uh, realizing this type of use. We're just talking about giving uh, it an opportunity as it grows further uh, to do it in a master planned uh, development uh, in a campus-like setting. And, uh, and we believe that, uh, that, that it's well suited for this area and, and appropriate with the appropriate zoning. In addition, we had an opportunity to uh, meet with and talk with some of the residents in Normandy Oaks and explain our intended uses to them. Uh, we've also committed to do certain things for them as a result of this zoning. And while those items are not necessarily uh, something that uh, you would hinge your, uh, your opinions on, I did tell um, uh, the Homeowners Association president and Mr. Wilkie who are here that I would make those comments as part of the record so that it was clear to everybody what we intended to do and what we will do. Uh, and, and those are very simple. On one of the parcels, uh, parcel 5A on our site plan that actually abuts the villages of Normandy Oaks, we are prepared to, uh, uh, to draft, sign, and file a deed restriction that would run in favor of the villages of Normandy Oaks Homeowners Association and the Normandy Oaks Homeowners Association and would require a majority vote of both to change, which would set a height limitation of 35 feet on any building on the property, also establish a 25-foot no-cut buffer along the northern and eastern property line where it would abut residential. In addition, as part of uh, doing that, 
uh, Mr. Weiner, who currently controls the Normandy Oaks Homeowners Association, he would be relinquishing that control and turning that over to the residents, which is something that they've been wo working on for some time and something that they're, they're very interested in. Um, in addition, on the A7 parcel, which I'll talk about briefly, uh, there's also going to be a limitation there of uh, building no more than three stories. Now, with regards to the A7 parcel, uh, the proposal there is for a senior citizen independent living units. So it will be senior apartments. Um, uh, it will be independent living, will not be assisted living, uh, and it will be run, owned and run by the American Hellenic Educational Progress Progressional Association, which is an affiliate uh, of the Greek Orthodox Church. And they operate these facilities throughout the, com uh, the country. There are already 90 facilities throughout the United States. Um, and they limit the access to the residents of 62 years and above. Uh, uh, the demographics for the average age is 75 years, 70-30 uh, women to men, 60% have cars, 40% do not. Uh, there is a manager on site 24 hours, but otherwise it is a typical apartment complex for seniors. Uh, they will have the amenities that you would expect, such as a library, exercise, recreational space, and even an area for gardening or walking, which may trigger the use of the, uh, the change you just made to, to A6 and A7. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it will be a total of 44 units, and we think that it will, uh, it will provide a good transition from Normandy Oaks to the villages of Normandy Oaks to, uh, to the A7 parcel and on into the PBC1 parcel. Uh, so with that said, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the Commission would have. Mr. Wilkie um, um, and Butch may have a, a comment or two that they would like to make, but uh, otherwise we would appreciate uh, your support this evening. Thank you, Mr. Barone. Mr. Wilkie, you turn the card in, and then uh, Charles Thomason. Yes. My name is Butch Thomason, and I'm the, a resident of Normandy Oaks uh, Subdivision. I'm also president of the Homeowners Association. And um, through the negotiations and everything, we, we've decided on these height uh, restrictions and the buffering, the no-cut buffering, and, and I, I go along with it right now. Uh, the, only, the only problem I'll have with it if is if it's not recorded. And other than that, I, uh, I approve what they're going to do. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Wilkie? And Rick Wilkie, president of the uh, Association of Associations, uh, we met, and we've, and I've been involved in working with uh, Bruce Weiner and uh, and the Normandy Oaks Homeowners Association. The AOA said, you know, agreed that this looked good, and as long as it worked out to the satisfaction of Normandy Oaks, so we were in support of it. I'll, I will comment that obviously, when you start talking about a specific project, uh, this is land use. However. A7 with a three-story height restriction when it could go up to 60 feet otherwise, things like this, appropriate deed restrictions on the property uh, work out fine. Um, I've already told Bruce that I'm going to file an appeal so that there's time in case the deed restrictions don't get filed that we can, uh, we can go ahead and appeal this. But he's assured me that within even the 10-day the ten ten time limit that all of this will be worked out and, and filed. So uh, we, this looks like an appropriate use. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this? Mr. Marone, you have any rebuttal? I don't other than to say that we had intended to try to have the, uh, the deed restrictions in place. The holidays caught us and uh, we were not able to do that, but uh, we're certainly, we understand that the appeal has been filed and, and we're quite comfortable with that and see no problem getting everything in place during that period. Okay, thank you. We'll close the floor to the public and turn it over to the commissioners. Mr. Davis. Paul. <clears throat> Under the two parcels, the uh, uh, parcel 5A1 and parcel 5A5, <clears throat> on one of the drawings, there are ponds below there, correct? That is correct. And those are still located in zoning A4? Um, will those be located in the zoning that you're requesting now? Those those are probably split. The uh, they, they will be PBC one uh, once the zoning is is if it is passed, then they will be entirely PBC one. Half of them, I think, are in PBC one now because the property on the other side of them is already PBC one. Right. 
Okay. Uh, I, you must have put a lot of thought into all this because it, it looks like it's pretty well laid out. We I have been working on this for a long time. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how long, yeah. but, but a long time, and, and we have. I do like the way you have from Oshner Boulevard, you have to uh, uh, the parcel 5A2, and then you transgress to A7, and, auto, and then it goes back to A4A. That, that works out pretty well. Uh, yes. The one parcel 5A5, has there ever been any consideration to put that as A7 as well? Since it, I'm, I'm not saying that's what it should be, but I'm just saying, has there ever been any consideration for that? So it also serve as a transition between the A4A and the PBC? There, there really wasn't. Uh, we, we knew that um, um, the residents in Normandy Oaks uh, did not want uh, any more A6, A7, or A8 multifamily. Okay than was necessary and we had a specific user for the a7 uh, being gotcha. the the greek church and right. uh and we felt that that was was adequate and and, and all we would look to try to but, try but to every accomplish. all three of these pbc ones you'll have the the criteria about the height restrictions in all three of those is that correct uh the height restriction is on the uh 5a5 the one that actually abuts the residential those oh, that are okay. on the other side are, are not subject to okay. that okay thank you okay Yes, it looks like a very well thought out plan and a lot of gone into it. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second by Mr. Davis. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item six, zoning case uh, 03 11 073. It's a major amendment to a FUD plan unit development overlay. It's 8.614 acres. The petitioner is Jeffrey D. Shane. Owner is Lonesome Development LLC. Parcel located on the east side of Louisiana Highway 21, south of Christwood Boulevard, north of Pinecrest Drive, Ward 1, District 1 staff. The major amendment to the PUD consists of an addition of one garden home unit to phase three of the subdivision creating an increase in garden home sites from 29 to 30. In order to keep the total number of home sites the same within the subdivision, one site will be removed from phase four. The addition will also trigger a reconfiguration of the green space, which will result in a side, slight increase in the total of square footage of green space provided. And staff has no objection to the request for major amendment to the PUD and would like to recommend approval. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Thank you, Mr. Doherty and Honorable Commission. A Happy New Year to you. Jeff Shane of the Jones Fussell Law Firm in Covington, and I represent Lonesome Development LLC, which is the owner and develop, developer of Phase 3 of Natchez Trace, which is a garden home section. If you would, uh, please look in the staff report uh, at that uh, sheet entitled Survey uh, done by Randall W. Brown and Associates. And in particular, if you will look in the most southern southernmost area where you see site 229A. Um, that is the primary change that is being made uh, to this garden home area. Natchez Trace is a residential PUD uh, that uh, has an overall density which will continue to be maintained. Uh, some of the sections or components of this PUD are garden home uh, units, if you will. Um, this is one of the sections, phase three, which was originally slated to have 29 garden home sites. As we have done in a prior phase of Natchez Trace, we are asking to place 30 units in this particular phase, but with the clear understanding and legal commitment, uh, as we have done in the past, that we will take one unit from the next garden home phase in Natchez Trace. What happens as a practical matter is once they actually do figure out the layout of both for infrastructure but also the sites themselves, in some instances it makes more sense to either take a unit out or perhaps add a unit. So the request before you this evening includes not only the addition of the 30th unit in phase three, and that's site 229A, but also, somewhat interestingly, the developer was able to go back and add some additional green space to this phase. So that despite the fact that we have a 30th unit being added to phase three, we are also going to have a net increase 
in green space within this phase. So at the end of the day, uh, site 229A uh, will not only be the 30th unit, but it will also have green space separation from lot 29, its closest neighbor. You'll see 29 um, is um, just to the south of it. And that 10 foot separation is the same separation that we have if you look at sites 228A, 227A, 226A, and also take a look at 201A. Those are the same 10 foot separators that we have from those sites uh, to the edge of the next phase. So um, this is, uh, in our view, uh, some housekeeping, but perhaps uh, well thought out in that it's consistent with the separation that we have with other garden home sites uh, in the subdivision. Last but certainly not least, uh, my client, uh, Mr. Henning, who's with me this evening, has had a telephone conversation um, in the last day uh, with Mr. and Mrs. Lawson, who own and I believe live on lot 29. That's the closest lot to this. And also we think they own lot 24 and they do not have any objection to this request. They have apparently a pretty significant stand of bamboo that they have planted on their side of the property already. And as long as no one uh, touches their bamboo, which we certainly <laughs> don't intend to do, they understand what this is all about and did not express opposition. So with those things having been said, we would ask that you uh, amend our PUD as requested. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shane. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak against this? Okay, please come forward. Hi, my name is Cheryl Marino. Um, I live at 217 Natchez Trace, and I am actually on lot 25. So this proposed additional a garden home is going to be right behind my house. Um, it looks like from the site map that I have that if they do put a home here, it's going to take, it's going to be more than half of the green space taken away to construct this house. And, you know, my, it, it doesn't show how far from the, my property line to the proposed house, how much depth is there that will still remain. So I was kind of curious about that. But, um, you know, in order to put this one house in, you're going to lose more than half the green space. Now, I know he said he's going to put it in the next phase, but that's, you know, when I bought the house, the man I bought the house from said there's green space there. They are going to be garden homes, but there's going to be a buffer there that, you know, it's going to be quite deep. Um, I drove back there today and from the way it looks, this proposed house is going to be 57 feet wide in the front and go down about 74, maybe 75 feet in depth. I don't know what size those lots are, but they look pretty shallow. I mean, this lot looks pretty shallow. So, you know, I... The lots are, are 57 wide and uh, 74 and a half foot deep. Mm-hmm. Okay, now... Uh, our staff and, and uh, Mr. Shane have, you know, calculated all this, and, and it does come up with additional green space. Uh, Helen, you got the number? It was about uh, 1,100 square feet additional green space. Is that what I, I'm remembering? Yes, approximately. Okay. But that's going to be in the next phase. No, no. No. Not in no. this one? In this one. Where yes, is it going to go? Get the lady a drawing that might help. Sure. Okay. Not, not to... Stop a discussion. All of the cream colored areas mm -hmm. are new green space. All of the new green space is in this phase. Okay. The new green space is not in the next phase. Oh, okay. Well, it's you have 10 feet, lot 25. Is, is that going to be from the back of my property line to the back of that house? Mr. Doherty, is it okay if I come up? Sure. Um, if you live in lot uh, 25, 25 mm -hmm. um, the distance from your back line to mm -hmm. the sight line is no difference. In fact, it's actually greater 
than the distance between your line to mm -hmm. site 200. But how, that's what correct. Is it? Well, uh, it looks like I would 65 guess feet. that if that's the scale, it's around 50 or 60 feet. Yeah, it looks like 65 60 feet, feet on, the, on the map. From my property line. Yes, ma'am. To the back of the In other this words, new you can house. see that you're actually closer to. Um, make sure that we're all looking. Yeah. You're actually closer to site 201A. No, 200A. 200A. I'm sorry. 200A. Yeah. 200A. 200A. 200A is closer to your back line mm -hmm. than site 229A will be. Mm -hmm. And I would tell you that if looking at that to scale, if there's 10 feet on the side. Yeah, I could see that. Right. The 10 well, feet, I would tell you that that appears to me, and maybe the commission feels otherwise, but a good 50 feet mm -hmm. plus or minus, maybe a little more than that. Mm -hmm. So we don't think that... Yeah, it looks this, like about 60 to 65 feet actually to us. I believe this structure yeah. is going to be further from you than the structure at site 200A. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to clear this part? It'll be green space. Okay, so... It's not a no-cut buffer. It's green space just as it is in all of the garden home areas. Mm -hmm. Well, I know in the front, when I first bought my house, the garden home's in the front. The back, they had like a buffer of underbrush and trees and right. there's nothing there now it's all cut right well the green space will be we have the ability to uh, put green space in which can be a mowed mm -hmm. manicured area now i don't know that everything will be cut to the property line i, I can't tell you it will or won't right but i don't want to create some impression that there's any no cut buffer areas there this is no different than any other green space mm -hmm. that we have for any of the other garden home sections. Mm -hmm. okay. That concept has not changed by virtue of this amendment, meaning that we would have the same rights to do the things we want to do. But mm -hmm. uh, don't be concerned that this structure is going to be any closer to you than the structure at site 200A. Mm -hmm. And that was my point. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not real happy about it, but. You know, it, it's up to y'all if y'all approve it. But okay. if, right. if I had known that, I would have selected an, another subdivision. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Please please uh, complete a speaker card. And if you, I did. you know, you did, mm -hmm. uh, right we don't. Oh, completed? I just, okay. Yeah. That way, if, you know, we need to get in touch with you, we can. Okay, Mr. Wilkie, you wanted to speak? Again, Rick Wilkie, president of the Association of Associations. Um, Jeff came to and told us about what was proposed here. Um, I actually I understand from Jeff that he had a few calls from people in Chifuncta Estates who had some issues and concerns. Uh, but then I got an email from Paul Lee in, in Chifuncta asking me about it, and I told him what it was, and he says, I don't know why that ca they call that a major amendment. I do know why. I mean, I know it's a major, that that's what it is. I mean, uh, when you start making a change like this. Uh, but from the standpoint of the small amount of changes and the addition of green space as a general concept, have no, you know, we, none of us had any problems with it. I'm not, none of the residents of, of Natchez Trace were at our meeting, so I can't speak for them. Okay, thank you. At, 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 and by the way, Jeff actually asked me to stay for this rather than going home, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's between you and him. <laughs> Does anyone wish to speak against this other than uh, the lady that uh, has? And we'll close the floor to the public and bring it back to the commission. Uh, Mr. Davis? Uh, unless there's any further comments, I'd like to... Got a question. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll turn this over to my commissioner. Jeff. Uh, I guess more housekeeping than anything. Yes. Um, this is going to create an additional, what, 3,500 square feet? Do I, do I get that correct? Of green space? No. Um, the precise number? From 64,376 to 67,897. And where exactly is that green space, the additional green space on it's, here? Um, I had trouble with, sure. with the, the legend. It's, it's in the northwest corner where it says gs36 GS okay. it is behind site 211a if you can kind of tell that it's a shaded area behind 211a and 210a okay can you kind of see that yeah okay okay it's also behind 
uh, sites, go to the other side, sites, forgive these old eyes, 202A, 203A, and 201A. Okay, okay. And those three sections um, of green space uh, amounted to, I think, a 0.1% increase um, in the overall uh, green space. I just had some trouble with the legend. Sure. And, and look, almost looked like smudges there. I couldn't tell whether that was additional green space or not. Um, Jim, you want to make the motion? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second? Second. Second by Mr. Matthews. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Any old business we need to bring up? Any new business? Anybody want to go home? <laughs> Thank you. Well, did we do okay? <laughs>